every design engineer has to deal with an assembly of parts and when we talk about assembly concept of engineering fields is very important and fundamental in getting the assembly result we need my name is kevin kutto and in this video i am going to explain everything about engineering fields so watch this video from start to end without jumping without skipping to get clarity around this topic and yes if you have not done yet please consider subscribing to my youtube channel your subscriptions likes shares and comments are valuable to me they encourage me to work harder in order to bring better and better design content for you so let's begin with our topic what is engineering fit when we talk about engineering fit it is always concerned with the two parts to be assembled when two parts are to be assembled together the relationship which results from the difference between their sizes before assembly this is very important we have to find this relationship before their assembly okay that relationship is called engineering fit so for terminologies we say that male part is a shaft and female part is hole and we are talking about the assembly of shaft and hole and the relationship between shaft and hole so now that we understand what is engineering fit let's understand tolerance allowance and deviation i'm not going to talk in details about tolerance because i have created a separate video on this on how to choose a right tolerance in your engineering application so please watch that video i have provided the link at the end of this video so what is tolerance tolerance is the difference between upper and lower limit of size every part will have its own tolerance what is allowance whenever we talk about allowance we always talk the relationship between two parts in this case we are talking about hole and shaft and allowance is the worst case clearance now here we are seeing positive allowance clearance but in some cases we can also get interference that is perfectly all right so allowance is the relationship between hole and shaft in worst case so here what is the worst case for assembly when your hole is at the lower limit and your shaft is at the upper limit that will create the worst case for assembly between hole and shaft that's why we have calculated allowance in that condition now the third term is deviation so whenever we talk about deviation we talk about basic size and whenever we talk about basic size we talk about zero line or line of zero deviation so what is basic size basic size is the reference size to which limits of size are fixed that means if i subtract my lower limit of size from my basic size i will get lower deviation similarly if i subtract my upper limit of size from my basic size i get upper deviation so my hole has two deviations my shaft has two deviation upper deviation and lower deviation so you might be already thinking about this question we understand this now but what is the basic size what is the value of basic size i should take okay where should i place my zero line now i have shown it in between these two shaft and hole right but in actual it will be always placed either on hole or shaft depending upon whether it is a hole based system of fit or shaft based system of fit so what are these systems we'll understand next before that let's summarize what we learned okay tolerance is always on the individual part allowance is always between two parts and it is the worst case for assembly and deviation is the reference to the basic size or reference to the zero line and where should we place basic size or zero line will be decided by the what kind of system of fit we are following so let's see what are the type of systems of fit the first system is hole basis system in hole basis system our hole size is constant and we get different fits by varying shaft sizes so here we see three shafts right 
though they don't look like sharps consider them as a sharp and by varying their sizes we get clearance transition or interference fit now we are going to study them in detail so i am not mentioning i am not going in details here but here you have to understand that we have to keep our hole constant and then very shaft sizes that's why it is called hole basis system now the next more important question where should we place our zero line on this so my zero line is placed on the lower limit of size of the hole that's why my basic size will be always equal to lower limit of size in hole basis system because that's where i'm going to place it and from there i'm going to calculate my deviations so what are the three factors i can change i can change my upper limit of the hole or upper and lower limit of the shaft in order to get different fits now let's understand where should we use hole basis system the hole basis system is popular because it is more convenient to make correct sizes of holes by using standard drills reamers or branches on other hand we can vary sharp size very easily by turning and grinding operations that's why hole basis system is very popular but based upon what is the requirement we can also choose shaft basis system so what is shaft basis system it is exactly opposite to the hole basis system here our shaft size is constant and then we vary hole sizes in order to get different fit so what are the fit clearance transition and interference fit again i am not explaining them in detail because we are going to study them in detail so where our zero line stands here see our zero line changed right now in shaft basis system it is matching with the upper limit of size of the shaft so that means my basic size and upper limit of size of shaft are equal and that's why my upper deviation of shaft is zero because what is upper deviation it is difference between these two right or what is how my upper limit is shifting from my zero line so that is zero that's why upper deviation of my shaft is zero in shaft based system so what are three remaining factors the three remaining factors are my lower limit of size of shaft and upper and lower limit of size of hole so these these three factors i can change and get different fits now where should i use my shaft based system shaft based system is used when the bars are readily available and they do not require further machining so they are readily available with you right and then what we can do is we can change the hole sizes and we get different fits now that we you understand shaft basis and hole basis system let's understand fundamental deviation diagram even though the, this diagram looks little complicated is very very easy so you see that there are some block letters and there are some small letters right there are capital and small letters capital letters start from a to z now i have not shown everything because i don't have space here but you can assume from a to z similarly small letters also start from a to z so what is capital letter denote capital letters denote hole okay what is the small letter denote small letter denotes shaft so we have to understand there are holes and shafts is there any significance of height of the block yes so what is the height of the block it shows the tolerance if it is related with the hole then it is hole tolerance if it is related to the shaft then it is shaft tolerance and you can see here zero line is touching my capital h and small h so basically it is combining my hole basis and shaft basis system so by combining different blocks we get different fits now there is third term which is very popular in this which is fundamental deviation that's why it is called fundamental deviation diagram right now you may see fundamental deviation mentioned here but earlier we saw there are four deviations upper deviation lower deviation for hole and shaft right so what is this fundamental deviation whichever deviation is closer to the zero line is my fundamental deviation very simple so if you take g block this is my lower deviation this is my upper deviation whichever is closer lower deviation is closer that's why it is my fundamental deviation in i i have upper deviation lower deviation which one which one is closer here upper deviation is closer to zero line that's why it is my fundamental deviation very easy right let's see with the example now this might you might have seen this kind of example very often 
Their 120 is the dimension and H7 and G5 are the blocks related to hole and shaft. 7 and 5 are tolerances. Okay. And when you look for these blocks and their tolerances on fundamental deviation diagram, you get different fields. Let's solve the problem. Okay. So we have this as a whole basis system. Why? How you know whole basis system? Because my zero line is touching my whole block and that is the H block because we saw that in fundamental deviation diagram, right? Now I have hole sizes and I have shaft sizes. What I need to do? What I need to calculate tolerances for hole and shaft, then fundamental deviation of hole and shaft and allowance between hole and shaft. So that is the problem I have to solve. Let's start with the tolerance of hole. So what is the tolerance of hole? Upper limit minus lower limit, which is 0.3. So I'm getting 0.3 as a tolerance of hole. So in the diagram I have shown the height of the block is 0.3. Now similarly tolerance of shaft is again upper limit minus lower limit. So you may see that 0.4 is the tolerance of shaft. Now let's calculate next question. What is that fundamental division of hole and shaft? So what is the thumb rule? Whichever deviation is closer to the zero line is my fundamental deviation, right? So that's how I get fundamental deviation of hole as a zero because you can clearly see that my zero line is coinciding or placed on the lower limit. So definitely I'm going to get zero deviation there. What about shaft? I'm going to get 0.2. So that's why my fundamental deviation of hole is zero and that of shaft is 0.2. So that's what I'm showing here right in the diagram now let's calculate the worst cases two worst cases okay one is the worst case and one is the best case for us so if you calculate them we have to go in opposite direction so uh, as i already mentioned what is the worst case for assembly when your hole is at the lower size shaft is at the higher size that will be the worst case for assembly and what is the best case when your hole will be at higher size and shaft will be at lower size that will be best case for assembly because this that's where you are going to get maximum clearance right and if you see these clearances if you calculate these clearances you will get 0.2 and 0.9 so 0.2 is my minimum clearance between these two uh, hole and shaft and 0.9 is my maximum clearance between hole and shaft so this is a very easy problem to solve only deviation while calculating deviation you have to look for zero line and when where should zero line lo be located it will be decided whether it is hole based or shaft based system allowance i said point two because that is the worst case right so definitely point two will be my allowance in this case so now that we understand fundamental deviation diagram and we have solved this problem in order to get clarity around different terminologies in fits let's understand types of fits we have already got the glimpse of it we know that there are three types of fits clearance fit transition fit and interference fit let's go into details of them and understand how to select how to design a proper engineering fit in your application so the first type of fit is a clearance fit now what is clearance fit when two parts are to be assembled together the relationship resulted from the difference between their sizes before their assembly is all time positive clearance then we call it as a clearance fit now what do we mean by all time positive clearance it means that when hole and shaft vary in their tolerance zones any combination of these actual sizes will always result into positive allowance we know the allowance is worst case right so any combination will result into a positive allowance that's what it means so in this case our tolerance zone of shaft will be always below the tolerance zone of hole. So let's see this concept with the example. So in this example, we have a shaft and hole. We know their sizes and tolerances and we are interested in calculating worst case allowance. So if you see this, uh, what, what will be the worst case when your hole size will be minimum and shaft size will be maximum. That will be one case, which is worst case for assembly. And the other case will be when your hole size will be bigger and shaft size will be smaller that will be like a good case for assembly because that, that's where you will get maximum clearance we already studied that so if you calculate this you'll get clearance between 0.25 to 
25 so we got all time clearance and that's why this is called a clearance fit now let's see the types of fit so there are three types of fits we get into clearance fits one is a loose fit running fit and slide sliding fit now what is loose fit it is used on a mating parts where precision is not needed so the name itself will suggest that the allowance between two parts that means your hole and shaft is always loose the example of this could be a pulley on shaft so you know the pulley will be loose fitted on the shaft the second type of clearance fit is running fit now running fit is used for the mating parts where dimension of shaft should be small enough to maintain a thin film of lubrication this is very important because in here your shaft will be rotating inside the bearing so example of this is bearing pair so you want to maintain a very uh, precision here you want to maintain a good clearance here very small but very precision clearance here and so that your thin film will be thin film of oil will be always maintained the third type of fit we have is a sliding fit now what is sliding fit it's used for the mating parts which slide with the slower speed and need greater precision for example if you see in the molding tool slides or sliding walls there are two parts with the which move or slide with respect to each other and that's why greater precision is required in terms of their clearance that's why uh, these are on a higher precision side so loose fit is on a lower precision side sliding fit is on a very high precision side and running fit falls between these two so now that we understand three types of clearance fits let's move to the interference fit now what is interference fit when two parts are to be assembled together the relationship resulted from the difference between their sizes before assembly is all time interference then we call it as a interference fit so what is all time interference again we calculated both cases worst case and good case for assembly in terms of interference right in terms of interference so we got interference in both the cases that's why we call it as a interference fit in other words if my shaft and my hole they vary in their tolerance zones still for any combination of sizes of hole and shaft i always get interference so that that's what it means by all time interference fit so in such cases in interference fit our tolerance zone of hole is always below tolerance zone of shaft you have to remember that the tolerance zone of hole will be always below the tolerance zone of shaft that's why we get interference and that's the reason why the shaft is either assembled with the pressure or heat expansion of the hole right so external assistance is needed in order to assemble shaft on the hole now let's see this with the example the same similar example this is a this is where we calculate interference fit so you see here in both the cases we have negative clearance that means interference and that's why we call this as a interference fit now let's see three types of interference fit so we have three types shrink or heavy fit medium force fit and trace or tight fit so here you see the amount of interference will be reduced as you go from left to right so let's see what is shrink or heavy fit the name itself suggests that here we have a maximum negative allowance okay in this type of fit our hole is expanded by heat and then cool rapidly in its position after assembly of shaft inside the hole so with the heat it will expand then we place our shaft inside and then we cool it rapidly that's how we get interference fit in the shrink or heavy type now what is the example fitting of rims is the good example of shrink or heavy fit now let's move to the medium force fit so what is medium force fit 
this has little bit lesser clearance than shrink fit or heavy fit and little bit more clearance than brace or tight fit so as name suggests it has medium allowance medium negative allowance we still need to apply considerable pressure in order to assemble shaft into hole so it's not like you cannot do this with the hand you need amount of pressure here the example i can give is the car wheel assembly so car wheel assembly is the good example of medium force medium force fit the third type of fit is a brace or tight fit now this is like hand assembly or with simple hand hammer you can assemble these two parts together so the name as i already mentioned it is a slight negative allowance fit that's why it gives us semi permanent fit so that's what is semi permanent fit that means you can remove this even though it is interference fit you can easily remove this the example i can give is the keyed pulley and shaft now that we understand the clearance and interference fit there is a third fit which is in between clearance and interference fit which is a transition fit so what is transition fit transition fit may result in clearance or interference based upon their actual sizes of mating parts within their tolerance zones so here sometimes we'll get clearance sometimes we'll get interference sometimes will be easier to assemble two parts sometimes it will be difficult to assemble two parts right now you might be wondering why we need this why why we need to have this variation sometimes for the clearance sometimes interference so why we need to have this ambiguity they are used where accurate location of parts is important but either small amount, amount of clearance or interference is acceptable so in this case we use transition fit so we don't want to go to the extreme end of clearance we don't want to go to the extreme end of interference we don't need a very large pressure or we don't don't need very loose kind of fit we need location is very important so we need in between that's why we use transition fit now let's see with this example similar example here if you see there are two types of two types of fits we are uh, clearances we are getting we are getting positive and negative clearance in the same example that's why it is a transition fit and if you see the tolerance zones tolerance zone of hole and shaft they are always overlapping okay so this is very important in transition fit that's why we get sometimes we get clearance sometimes we get interference now that we know the transition fit what is transition fit let's understand the types of it the first type is push or snug fit now this refers to the zero allowance zero allowance means two parts are just touching each other when they are assembled so light pressure is sufficient to assemble these two parts the example i can give is locating pin assembly so in locating pin assembly uh, almost parts these two parts are touching each other and that's why we can easily assemble that with light very light pressure the second example or second type rather is a force or shrink fit now what is force and shrink fit the name itself suggests that it is used when two mating parts to be rigidly fixed with each other so that they don't move with respect to each other right or they move together so both the ways you can say and we need either high pressure or heated expansion of the hole and then rapidly cooling of the hole in order to assemble shaft in the hole that's where we use force and shrink fit and the last and not least ringing fit what is ringing fit ringing fit it has very slight al negative allowance so push fit has almost zero allowance force fit has little larger allowance and ringing fit has very slight allowance very slight negative allowance okay so here we need pressure in order to assemble so still we need pressure but that pressure will be little lighter than force or shrink fit the example i can give is again fixing of keys in the keyhole so when you are fixing the keys in a keyhole we uh, we need to apply light pressure but it is not very big pressure that's why this could be termed as a ringing fit so i have a problem for you now okay uh, you need to solve this problem 
and write the answers into comment section so if you're not able to solve this problem that means you are not understood this concept okay so put some efforts and try to solve this problem it will it, it will not take more than two or three minutes to solve this problem so one important thing to understand here is in this we have a shaft based system so earlier when i had explained this problem to you i had used hole based system when you are solving this you need shaft based system so where it will affect you it will affect when you calculate fundamental deviation of hole and shaft so uh, be careful there and give me the answers in comment section and what I will do is I'm, I'm not going to give answer here but I will read your answer and and I will tell you whether it is correct or wrong right and yes if you're not done yet please subscribe to my youtube channel your subscribe like share and comments are very important in order to reach to the maximum audience of design engineers Thank you very much for watching this video. You can contact me at kevinputto at the rate gmail.com.